Welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing three oil and gas midstream companies and analyzing their financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Midstream refers to points in the oil production process that falls between upstream and downstream. Midstream activities include the storage, processing, and transportation of petroleum. In November 2014, Intero Resources, ticker AR, spun off its midstream operations via an IPO. We're going to look at the midstream company and not the parent company. So the company we're going to look at has a ticker AM, Antero Midstream, and their market cap is $2.6 billion, and they're trading at $5.53 a share. And to calculate the shares outstanding, its market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding, $470 million. We're going to need this number for later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if you have positive free cash flow, that means you're generating more cash than you're spending. This company has negative free cash flow in 2016, but they do have positive in 2017, 18, and 19, and it seems to be growing, which is good. The net income is also positive for three years and negative one year. They had a big negative in 2019. And it looks like they were pre-revenue for a few years, and in 2019 was the first time they got revenue in the door. So it is hard to value these companies, but we'll do our best. Let's look at a capital structure. Total debt, $2.9 billion. They pay 3.8% interest on their debt. The cost of debt is 2.6%. And the way you calculate cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. They have 48% of debt in that capital structure. That means they have 52% equity. And to calculate the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile a stock is relative to the market. And I think if a company has a beta above two, it's a volatile stock. This has a beta of 3.44, so it's a really volatile stock. The stock moves three and a half times the market. To calculate the cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model, and that's 28.7%. That's a really high cost of equity. The reason being, they have such a high beta. And the WAC, the weighted average cost of capital, is 16.2%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that $68 billion. We discount these numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company at $2.4 billion. We divide that number by 470 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 511. They're trading at 553, so they're trading at an 8% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 1140. So they're saying the stock is undervalued. They're saying it's a buy. I was not able to value this company using my traditional DCF models. I had to use my alternative model, which looks at the free cash flow growth the past few years and extrapolates that out for 30 years. So I had a hard time valuing this company, but I came pretty close to what they're trading at, which is interesting. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it's been on a downhill slope for a while and it's at a pretty low point. So if you believe in this company and this industry, this could be a great stock to buy. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, because they have negative net income. The median PE in the market is 15.3. They have a decent price of sales of 3.1. The median in the entire market is 1.9. The average is 5.2. Price to book is good at 0.8. The median in the entire market is 2.4. The average is 5.5. So PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. 
I like to see below 2.5, they're at 3.1. So investors are paying $3.10 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.8. So investors are paying 80 cents for $1 book value. That's a really good ratio. Current ratio is really bad at 0.4. The median is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Good interest coverage ratio 3.4. The median is 4.0, the average is 12.9. Bad ROE, negative 11%. The median is 13%, the average is 8%. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2. They're at 0.4, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, so they probably need to take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, but they're negative since they have negative net income. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0. They're at 3.4, so that's a good ratio. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on DHT, Enbridge, Enterprise, Energy Transfer, Euronav, Frontline, Kinder Morgan, MPLX, Noble Midstream, One Oak, Plains, and PBF. Antero is here in the beginning. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse than the average in PE because they're negative. The average is 9.1. Price of sales, they're worse at 3.1. They do have a better than average price to book at 0.8. The average is 1.4. Current ratio is bad, they're below the average, negative ROE, so they're below the average. They are better in debt, they have 48% debt, the average is 55%. Market cap, they're below the average at 2.6 billion, the average is 15 billion. Enbridge, a Canadian company, when it converts them to US dollars, at 61 billion. This company pays a nice dividend, 21.5%. This industry is known for paying a really good dividend, the average is 14.5%, almost every company pays a nice dividend. To summarize, I have them trading at an 8% premium. Their ratios are pretty weak, but they just started getting revenue, so it could be a really strong company in the next few years. The second oil and gas midstream company is Euronav. This is a Belgium-based company, but we're going to look at the ticker that trades on the American Stock Exchange, since the company reports its financials in US dollars. They have a market cap of $2 billion, so they're a small cap company. They're trading at 964 a share, and they have 205 million shares. Let's look at the financials. Their free cash flow is a bit up and down. They had three positive years, one negative. Same thing with net income. The numbers are up and down. They had one negative and three positives. You generally want to invest in companies with consistent numbers, else it's really hard to know where the company's going. Their revenue is up and down for three years, but in 2019 they had their best year, so that's a good sign. Let's look at a capital structure, $1.7 billion of debt. They pay 5.3% interest on the debt, and that's their cost of debt. Their capital structure is 42% debt. The rest is equity, 58% equity. And they have a really low beta, 0.07, so the stock does not move much relative to the market. Their cost of equity is only 2.86%. So their WAC is 3.9%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $8.5 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $8 billion. We divide that by 205 million shares we get a calculate stock price of $39. They're trading at about $10, so they're trading at a 75% discount. So it's a strong buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying $17, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it peaked at about $15, $16 five years ago, but the price has come down and it looks like it's been pretty steady for the past four or five years which is why it has such a low beta. Let's look at the financial ratios. A decent PE, a good price of sales, and a really good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 17.6. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 2.1.
Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.9. They have a good current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're only at 5%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0 and they're at 2.0. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Entero, DHT, Enbridge, Enterprise, Energy Transfer, Frontline, Kinder Morgan, MPLX, Noble, One Oak, Plains, and PBF. Euronav is in the middle. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse in PE and price of sales. Even though they do have a good price sales ratio, the average in the industry is 1.6. They are better in price to book and they have the highest current ratio of all the companies at 2.5. ROE is less than average at 5%, average is 17%. They're lower than average in debt. In terms of market cap, they're only 2 billion. The average is 15 billion. They have a high dividend yield of 18%. The average is 14.5%, so they're doing good in that category. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 75% discount. The ratios look pretty decent. Let's move on to the third company. DHT is another oil and gas midstream company where you're going to look at. This company has the highest dividend yield I have ever seen in my life. Let's get started with the model. They have a small market cap, a little under $1 billion. They're trading at 578. And you can see their free cash flow is really bad. They have negative free cash flow in three of the four years, so they're spending a lot more than they're bringing in. They only have one year of positive free cash flow. Their net income is positive three of the four years. And their revenue is getting stronger as time goes on, which is better than the last two companies we looked at. Let's look at a capital structure. $851 million of debt. They pay 6.5% interest on the debt. The weight of debt is 48%, which means 52% of equity in a capital structure. They have a negative beta, which means their stock moves opposite of the market. If the market goes up, this stock should go down. If the market goes down, this stock should go up. That gives them a really low cost of equity, 0.78%. The WAC is 3.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's one billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.5 billion. We divide that by 171 million shares. We get a calculated stock price at 884. They're trading at 578, so they're trading at a 35% discount. So it's a strong buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 1127, so they're in the same range, just a little higher than me. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like if you owned a stock in 2015, it didn't move too much. It's pretty much at that level. Let's look at the financial ratios. Really good PE, really good price to sales, and really good price to book. Their ratios look amazing. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 13.4. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.8. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.1. All solid ratios. Good current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, but a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 1.7. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're only at 8%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're at 2.5, so they can cover their interest payments, which is good. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Taro, Enbridge, Enterprise, Energy Transfer, Euronav, Frontline, Kinder Morgan, MPLX, Noble, One Oak, Plains, and PBF. Here's DHT, second to the left. Now if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So PE, they are worse than the average, even though they have a good PE, because the average is 9.1. Price of sales, they're also worse than the average at 1.8. They do have a better than average price to book and current ratio. Their ROE is worse than the average. 
They're a little lower than debt, and they're much lower market cap, just under a billion dollars. The average is 15 billion. Here is where it changes. They pay a 36% dividend yield. That's the most I've seen ever. I can't believe how much dividends they pay. I don't know if they can continue this forever, but that's pretty amazing. The average in the industry is 14.5%. To summarize, I calculate their trading at a 35% discount. They have solid ratios. They pay an amazing dividend. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I answer all comments. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Thanks for watching.